Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to Fireside Farms. I am so pumped to be giving you guys the first official garden tour of the 2023 spring gardening season. I just planted all of these little guys out this last weekend, so there's not gonna be any harvesting. The plants haven't grown up big, but I wanna show y'all what we've got going on this year and how much we've expanded since last year. Oh, and this is Freya. Hey, sweet girl. Oh, yes. <laughs> So for those of you that are new, I live in Southwest New Mexico in US Zone 8A. I live in the desert. So my gardening content is primarily based on growing food sustainably in a hot and or dry climate. Although I do my best <laughs> to make it look really, really green here. So if y'all are looking for gardening tips on growing food, growing plants or just homesteading itself in a hot and dry climate. I've got plenty of videos. I encourage you to check them out. And I hope to be expanding this homestead so much more in these coming years. I have already grown so much since the start of my YouTube channel last year. So let's come along and see what's in the garden. So I have several thousand square feet of gardening space, which I can no longer really accurately give you a square footage of because I have just started growing all over my 1.5 acre homestead in many different places. I currently have 11 raised beds in my raised bed garden plus several pots and things that I will be planting out throughout the year with extra plants and I have approximately four in-ground garden rows that are about 40 feet long. I also have several fruit trees on the property that include apples, mulberries, a fig, pomegranates, and I have this newly developed in-ground garden where I'm attempting to grow about 100 bean plants in my native alkaline sandy soil. So if you've seen any of my previous gardening videos, I traditionally start on the southeast side of the garden and then work my way north, and I'm gonna keep with that theme, <laughs> keep things organized, and most of my raised garden beds are in a row, so it's just easy to reference if I need to go back or y'all need to go back to see exactly what is in each bed. So most of these garden beds are eight feet long by four feet wide. And that size of bed makes it fairly easy to reach to the middle of each bed from either side. Uh, take that with a grain of salt though. I do have a little difficulty because <laughs> I'm really short. I'm a little over five feet tall, uh, but I can, I can manage it. it I, I try my best not to step in my raised garden beds because I don't want to compress the soil, but it's doable. Eight by four is a good size. So here in this eight by four bed, I have onions planted, and this is the only thing planted in this bed besides one little summer savory herb plant here in the corner. Now these are a mix of two different types of onions. One is a red onion called Violet de Galmi, and the other is a yellow or whitish yellow onion called Texas Early Grano. I did start these onions from seed and then I transplanted them out into the garden early spring. Sometime earlier this year I transplanted them out. That is not the traditional way to grow onions in the southwest. Traditionally you will start them from seed in the fall because our nights in the winter don't get cold enough to actually kill them off and then they will slowly grow and establish roots all winter and then bulb up in the spring. <laughs> I did not do this last fall. So these onions are a little bit farther behind than I would like, but I am crossing my fingers that they will bulb up and I will have a full bed of onions for the year. Now directly north in this bed is a newly planted bed for this year. And along this trellis, I'm hoping to grow some Armenian cucumbers. Now I will also plant these or seed them over there on that trellis once the onion bulbs up, but for now they're only planted on this side because I don't want to take up any room on the other side. And then all around the perimeter of this bed I have squash plants. All down the middle I have pepper plants. And the squash varieties differ. I have several in here. I see honey boat, Ron Denise, Tahitian melon. <laughs> I have several different types of squash in here. I'm doing that for a reason. I had a pretty terrible problem with squash bugs last year 
and I had all of my squash, all of the same squash together. That ended up wiping out several <laughs> plants of squash of one type of plant and that left me without anything to eat of that variety. So my goal this year was to greatly spread apart my plant locations so that if I did have a pest overload in one area or some sort of disease in one area, it wouldn't affect, hopefully, wouldn't affect all of my beds and all of my plants because they're planted in different spots. Now I am, I am completely aware that a lot of these squashes, especially the winter squash that I have planted in here, such as this tromboncino, which is a very trailing variety of squash, I know they will get a lot larger than this bed can hold, especially with the peppers in the middle. But my hopes are that as they start to trail, I can just drape them over the side and they actually won't encumber the bed at all. And as for these peppers, I'm hoping that they grow faster than these outside squash because they will grow tall and the squash will be low growing squash. That way, both plants can still get their required sunlight and the sunlight won't be an issue. I don't have too many plants in here. I don't think the nutrient or water requirements will be an issue. I didn't plant them very close together. But this is an experiment this year, so we'll see. I didn't just want to put squash in this bed because I can't fit that many squash in one area. They tend to be very, very large plants and then just waste a ton of space in the middle. So we're trying it with peppers. <laughs> so we've done the first row here and we're now back on the south side of the garden on the second row. And this is a second year bed, contrary to these first two, which I built this spring. So this bed has been here for about a year and has pretty established soil. And I've decided to plant tomatoes all down the middle on this trellis. And then on the sides, I'm just putting various herbs and small flowering varieties that don't really get in the way of the tomatoes, but will still be good for pollinators and food production. So a few of the tom tomato varieties I have in here are giant crimson. This is from MI Gardener. I have an Amish paste, which is a Roma style paste tomato. It's best for canning because they aren't very juicy. They just have a lot of meat. This is a Paul Robeson tomato. And what pairs perfectly with tomatoes are basil plants. This is a lime basil. I do have a couple leftover leeks from the winter. I'm still letting them grow up. They aren't anywhere near each other where their roots would interfere at this point, and they will definitely be pulled out before these tomatoes get too large. This is a beautiful Bright Lights Cosmo, which is... Oh, look! They got a flower bud starting to form here. So those should be flowering pretty soon. And those are gorgeous. Here on the sides I have yarrow which is a perennial flower and herb. It's actually a weed in a lot of the United States, not here in the Southwest. It doesn't really thrive by itself out on the roadsides. It's just too dry, but it is an excellent, excellent medicinal herb. I have talked about it at length in previous videos. So I grow a ton of yarrow here. I have drinking it in tea. I use it topically because it's a great styptic, which means it stops blood. And it's also a great diaphoretic, so it helps a lot if you have a fever. But I have tons of yarrow all over this garden. You will see plenty more of it. On this side of the trellis, I have an Amish paste. This is, oh, this is a German pink. This is an excellent variety of tomato I have grown here before, and it does very well in the heat. This one as well, this is a gold metal tomato. This is a yellow slicing variety and I have not grown any other yellow varieties before, but this one tastes delicious. I love the gold metal tomato. Oh, and here we are again with a tomato that I have grown and I love. This one's called a Mexico midget and it is by far the hardiest tomato variety I have grown in my garden in the last three years. It reseeded itself in my garden last year and it's a small little red cherry tomato variety. It's, it's got decent flavor, not the greatest flavor I've ever had of a cherry tomato variety, but the fact that it's so hearty in our heat and reseeds itself willy-nilly <laughs> is great because I always encourage plants to reseed themselves and then I love to save those seeds because I eventually <laughs> 
want to be able to grow a garden that is perfect for my desert climate. I want varieties that withstand the heat and the dryness and the test of time and that I never have to worry about babying. So here on this trellis, on both sides of this trellis, I have rattlesnake pole beans planted. I did direct sow them and I think that was a few days ago. So I don't have anything coming up just yet. Oh, and look at that. The top layer of the soil is dry. So of course nothing's gonna be germinating. I have talked about the top layer of soil in the desert drying out very quickly in several of my previous videos. And I'm now realizing I'm gonna have to water this every day. I was hoping I wouldn't because it's still getting pretty cool at night, but it's just getting too hot during the day, guys. And here in the middle of this trellis hanging is going to be my first pepper plant harvest of the year. This is a pot of peño pepper. I received a couple um, free seeds from a company called Seeds and Such. And I've never grown this before, but it's apparently kind of like a trailing variety. You see a lot of pictures of it in hanging baskets, such as that. <laughs> so I started these seeds way early, like in January or February, and just kept them inside until it got warm enough for me to be putting this little guy outside. So that's why I have peppers, a pepper. <laughs> so early this year but I'm very very excited for it and then here in this bed I still have the rattlesnake pole beans planted on this side as well and this is largely a pepper bed I do have a chamomile plant this overwintered from last year and oh, look it's starting to bloom hooray so I love growing my own teas chamomile is one of my favorite it knocks me out every night before bed this is the only one I have in the garden this year and I didn't start any more seeds, but that should be fine. I'm, I'm probably not going to start any more. I grew chamomile last year and it performed great during the spring and in the late fall when we get our monsoon, but it did not perform well in the heat of the summer. So I'm just not seeing a point in devoting a whole lot of garden space to it, uh, at least this year. We'll see how this plant does. But for now, this is one of two devoted pepper beds that I have. Peppers are my absolute favorite thing to grow in the garden. I live in the Southwest. I was raised on green chili, hatch green chili, and I love spicy foods. So I have tons of spicy peppers in here. This is a jalafuego, which is a, a like a jalapeno variety. It's just supposed to be hotter. And then I have a bunch of sugar rush peach peppers as well. I do have non-hot varieties such as this habanada just because I have a lot of family that doesn't like a whole lot of heat and I can get a fruity habanero flavor from a habanada pepper without any of the heat so I can make more mild salsas and sauces for both the kids and like my mom <laughs> who doesn't like spicy foods. But here we go with the hot again. I have California Reaper right here. And I do have some regular snacking peppers, such as banana peppers and miniature chocolate bell peppers. I only have one Georgia Flame this year, which was a pretty good variety. It's more of a large, kind of thin-walled pepper that has some spice, but I didn't really love the flavor comparatively to other thin-walled hot peppers that I had, such as the Padron pepper. So I'm not wasting a ton of garden space on that, but of course I'm gonna grow one. <laughs> now this bed is just a four x four because I have a one x four bed right here that's mainly just for a trellis. And this is kind of just a smorgasbord of things. Here I have a slightly frost-bitten Genevieve's basil plant and I just threw a tromboncino squash in here there's a bikino pepper this right here is eucalyptus and then I put a tomato plant right in the middle <laughs> this was kind of just a bed where I stuffed leftovers and I'm not quite sure what's gonna be going on in here <laughs> I still have a lot of overwintered plants such as these leeks right here these are chives, which is a perennial. These are gonna stay here. I do have one more chive plant in a pot over there, but I like chives. So these are gonna stay here 
and that yarrow, which is a perennial, is also going to stay here. Also, obviously, the eucalyptus is a perennial as well. So that kind of limits this bed to what I can plant because I have these three perennials that are going to be in here year after year. Here in this trellis bed, this 1x4, I planted some onion sets. So onion sets are basically baby onions. They're mini onion bulbs that you can plant in the spring of the year that you want to harvest those onions. If you'd seen my previous video on planting onions, I started some from seed and then I started some from sets. And these sets in particular I got from my local big box store, I think. I think it was Lowe's or I don't know if it was Lowe's or Home Depot. But they, they ended up doing really well and I thought they weren't going to because they didn't look so good when I got them out of the bag. But I'm excited to see how they turn out. And then hopefully by the time I come to harvest these guys, maybe June or early July, these beans will start to be taking off. And these are the purple hole pink eye beans. I believe that's what they're called from Baker Creek. I've never grown them before. This is my first time. But they are a cow pea variety. A cow pea, also called a southern pea, a crowder pea, a field pea. They're a very heat tolerant variety of bean. You'd know them as black eyed peas. So I grow mainly cow peas when I'm growing beans here just because they're one of the only things I can found that can really take the heat. Now on this side I have the same. These were the onion sets and I also have uh, the purple hole pink eye beans on this side and the, these will just cover the trellis. I'm planting everything on each trellis on the same side. There just might be a difference in when I plant them. And this 4x4 bed also has two perennials. This is just a garden rosemary that is amazing. It smells so good. And this is yet another yarrow. But what I do have in here are four determinate tomatoes called the Grand Marshall F1 Hybrid. I have nothing against hybrids. Uh, they are just a bit more expensive. I got these seeds from Johnny Seeds after I had a huge tomato failure that last year and I don't really know what happened. But these are a heat tolerant determinant variety of tomato. So determinant meaning they're going to grow to a set size. They're going to set a specific amount of fruits and then they will be done producing. So determinant varieties are really helpful if you're preserving a lot of tomatoes because they will tend to ripen in a general two to three week time, all of them. And that's why I'm just trying out four plants this year. Because they're determinate, they're not going to keep growing forever and ever, so I don't need a whole lot of space for these guys. We're gonna see how they do. I, like I said, most of my tomatoes are heirlooms, and I'm excited to see how this hybrid does. Back at the south end of the garden, we are in the last row of the garden. And this is my fall planted garlic that is growing so beautifully with this spring. Now I have three varieties here that I will list on the video because I do not remember them right now off the top of my head. Two of them are a hardneck variety, which means they will grow scapes. I will essentially have a double harvest. I will have scapes to harvest and eat, and then I will harvest the bulb after the scapes are gone. And then the third variety is a soft neck garlic. And they should be done pretty soon. I'm expecting to harvest most of this garlic within the next month. And here in this gorgeous little wooden bed, I have got mint. Mint and lemon balm. This lemon balm is newly transplanted this year. I transplanted some a couple weeks ago and it got beat up by frost, but it lived. And this is the other chive plant that I was talking about. Now mint uh, tends to take over beds. It grows by underground rhizomes as well as by seed. So you really don't want it in a garden plot where it can take over. It's kind of like Bermuda grass. Lemon balm is in the mint family. So I'm just gonna put these two guys together and they can take over this bed as much as they want. <laughs> and here is my second pepper bed that's largely devoted to peppers. I have many of the same, although some varieties I did not mention in the other bed are canary bell pepper, a Thai hot pepper. I have the Padron pepper right here. And this M. So the M on any of these tags stands for my saved seeds. I had several pepper varieties last year that I really, really wanted to further their genetics with. 
So I saved seeds and planted a couple of them. Thankfully they germinated and I was able to plant a couple of my own saved seeds in the garden this year. Here's another yarrow. <laughs> oh look, and there's another yarrow. It really is kind of a weed in my garden beds. I shouldn't have this much. But I have several flower varieties as well. This is a bachelor's button. This is a, I believe it's a Rosetta Cosmo. It's a red variety of Cosmo. And then over there I have parsley. This parsley grew last fall and it grew great and it overwintered because it doesn't mind cold temperatures and we don't get that cold here. Though I am not expecting it to last very long because it doesn't like heat and our days are going to be in the 90s next week. So I don't expect too much life out of that parsley. I'm not worried about it though. I don't use a whole lot of parsley. So it'll be okay. And we are on to the last bed of the raised garden portion. Now, this is actually longer than the rest of the beds. This is 10 feet by 4 feet. And in here, I mostly have tomatoes. So I have tomatoes down the middle of this bed, several flower and basil varieties on the outskirts of this bed. And then at the end, I'm going to have a trellis that I have not put up yet, and I'm growing cucumbers. Now, some of these tomato plants don't look the greatest. They were in their pots a little too long and I'm hoping that they bounce back after planting. But since it's only been two days since I transplanted these guys, I'm giving them a little bit of a chance. I am consistently worried about disease because of something that struck all of my tomato plants last year in my garden, and I ended up having no tomatoes. <laughs> and so I'm seeing the damage on these tomatoes and I'm trying to remember like, was this what it looked like? Could this be it? And I have, no earthly idea but i'm trying to not stress myself out about it um a lot of these tomatoes got damaged when i was hardening them off because we had some cold winds that burned the edges so i'm hoping that's what it is and maybe a little bit of transplant shock but i'm i'm constantly freaking out <laughs> about losing all my tomato plants again this year which is why i have several beds of tomatoes i have this bed that bed that bed and <laughs> one weird tomato plant over there. And keeping them apart like this in different beds, I'm hoping if some calamity strikes one bed, it won't take out the rest. Surely it won't, <laughs> I don't know. This is a lovely bok choy plant that has gone to seed and I am waiting for it to dry out. And these are the seed pods that will eventually dry out so I can harvest seeds. The reason I didn't pull this guy out is because he was already leaning over the bed so although his root system might be extensive, these plants aren't really big enough for it to be a bother. And he's not in the way of any sunlight because he's hanging out over here. So as long as he remains not a pest to my tomato plants, I'm just going to leave him. And hopefully I can get some seeds out of this guy before I have to rip him out. Here's a calendula plant. I have another calendula plant in the garlic bed and then several plants in the front yard. Here's another Bright Lights Cosmo, some Genovese Basil, and some very sad looking Thunder Cukes. Now the Thunder Cucumber is another hybrid variety I bought from Johnny Seeds. It is more heat tolerant, and I have had okay luck with cucumbers in the past, but they tend to peter out in like June because they don't like a lot of heat over 90 degrees. And we're already gonna be over 90 in April. <laughs> So I'm hoping that this variety does better. These were transplants that I started in soil blocks, but I also seeded, I also direct sowed several seeds in this bed, just in case these transplants don't do real well. I'm hoping that the seeds will also come up and then obviously I planted several seeds in here. If I have too many and they all come up, I can just thin them, it's not a big deal. But I'm a very nervous gardener, so I like having lots of redundancies. <laughs> Here I have more Genovese basil. Ooh, this is a variety I haven't shown you. This is Thornburn's terracotta tomato. And this is Berry's crazy cherry. I grew this last year and it was pretty good. The skin of the tomato was a little bit tougher than I expected. It didn't quite pop like your standard yellow cherry tomato. I'm hoping it was just a fluke and 
it will be better this year, but we will see. This is a Thai basil. This also got damaged in the frost, but it's still alive and it will grow. Basil is very prolific and does not have any problem growing or receding itself in my garden. Here's a stray leek I'm still letting grow before I harvest it. And another Berry's Crazy Cherry and Thornburn Terracotta. And this looks like a little stray pepper plant. What do we have here? Oh yeah, pepperoncini. I also have several of these in the garden. And it looks like we've got our first bloom forming. Hooray! It is getting quite dark at sunset here, guys, so I'm not quite sure how much time I have left. I will absolutely finish the in-ground garden. I'm just not sure I'm gonna get to the orchard or the new front yard landscaping slash edible garden I started. But we will do this at a different time next time and I will be able to show you the entirety of the homestead. So in all four rows, basically the length of the shade cloth structure, I have planted potatoes. In these first two rows, up to a certain point, I planted Corolla, which is a yellow potato variety, and it's a bit more of a storage variety than the other one, which is the Dark Red Norlin. The Dark Red Norlin is a red potato variety, and I planted these at about the middle of March, and I prefer to plant my potatoes at the beginning of March, but they didn't come in the mail when I thought they would, so I don't have a whole lot of them popping up yet. That's a little difficult here in the desert because potatoes don't like really high heat and it gets really hot here really quickly. So I'm worried that they may not perform as well as they did last year, but I also extended my shade cloth structure this year, which I didn't have last year. So maybe the new shade cloth will offset the heat enough that they will produce just as well. I'm not quite sure, but I do have a couple. <laughs> Here's a little potato coming up, and right here as well. Oh, looks like right here as well. So I have a few, they're just not as large as they were last year. I think last year by, by about this time they were probably around here, and I had them everywhere. Not all of my potatoes have popped up, but we'll play it by ear. Either way, I'm going to get potatoes. <laughs> They just may not last very long. They may not have great storage capabilities if they're too small or they're too hot or the plants are too stressed. Um, but I will get potatoes regardless. <laughs> and in this first row, I have some remnants of the winter slash spring garden. This is yarrow again, <laughs> which is growing and will probably stay here for the duration of the year. This is a... I can't remember if this is a rutabaga or a cab. It looks like a rutabaga. It doesn't look like it's doing so well, but I have no reason to get rid of it yet so it can stay. This is a catnip <laughs> that my cats keep jumping into my garden and eating. It's just mowed down right here. And you can always see like this little dig spot. That's what I see when I come into my garden every morning. They mowed this down and they like rolled around in it. And it's kind of really cute, but I really, really don't want my cats in my garden. Um, which is, it's so weird because this, this ginormous plant, that is catnip. And I also have catnip in my front yard. So I don't know why they're so obsessed with this one plant. <laughs> I have no idea. But down here I have whole bunch of nothing coming up except oh there's some potato sprouts coming up you'll just see them scattered here and there but they're not really solidly all coming up and that's what's a little disappointing this is a red lettuce variety that has overwintered and started growing again i'm sure it doesn't taste very good Hmm. No, it's not that bad. That was a little dusty though. <laughs> um, lettuce does can get like lettuce can tend to get a little bitter in high heat, so I should probably harvest this guy pretty soon since it's warming up. But he made it all the way through the winter. Bold move. 
I also have several sunflowers coming up in my garden from a wild sunflower variety that I planted here last year which I've now realized was a mistake because I love volunteers in my garden and I don't want to pull them up because anything that self sows here I want to save seeds from since it's obviously hardy but I don't want a bunch of sunflowers in the middle of my potato beds <laughs> and another thing I found I was like what are all these little seedlings coming up but let me show you guys something. This is the remnants of a pumpkin that I threw in the garden last fall just because it was trash and I was like, oh, I'll just let it decompose in the garden. Well, I just let it reseed itself all over my garden. Pumpkin, 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 pumpkin. Where are you? Sheesh. Look at this guy. Pumpkin. That's potato. Pumpkin. This pumpkin receded itself everywhere. <laughs> and I didn't even think the seeds were viable. It was one my mom gave me and I didn't eat it. We actually fed it to my neighbor's horse because <laughs> he loves pumpkin. And that's why I threw just the trash in here. I just tossed it over the fence when he was done eating it and didn't think anything of it. And now I have pumpkin sprouts everywhere in this potato road and I don't want to take them out <laughs> because they sowed themselves I don't know what to do I'm just gonna let it grow for now because at this point I'm not exactly growing potatoes so I might as well grow pumpkins if it's gonna grow here <laughs> but it's everywhere I've counted at least 10 plants I don't have the daylight to sit here and count them with you guys but at some point I will get a hard count <laughs> So as I said, I have potatoes basically up until this line and that's the demarcation line I use to know where to stop my potatoes growing. And then in the rest of this bed I have planted squash varieties and pepper varieties. Oh, and one little baby okra. <laughs> so this is a birdhouse gourd. Little, little baby guy. This is an unknown <laughs> and this was an art comb watermelon but I I just saw this earlier when I came out and he has been beheaded which is really disappointing I had a video a couple videos back about beheaded seedlings and learned that I have a cutworm problem so I'll show you a seedling right now with um oh right here where I have put aluminum foil on most of these to protect them from cutworms just coming along and chopping through the stem. But I apparently forgot to do it on that guy. So no more watermelon. I'm not real worried about these larger plants that I have, these pepper plants, because they are so large. I've never really had a problem with cutworms attacking my larger plants before. But a lot of these squash seedlings are very, very tiny. Oh, this is an art comb watermelon as well. I should probably cover this guy with foil if I want any sort of watermelon in my garden this year. Here's a tromboncino squash. Is this a tromboncino as well? Oh, I don't have him labeled. When I planted my squash in my soil blocks this year, I labeled the rows of soil blocks, but I was just planting them out willy-nilly <laughs> uh, as I went over a period of like one or two weeks. So I ended up not labeling a lot of the squash plants in my garden. So it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> I have no idea half of the squash that are planted in here. I mean, I know which squash seeds I started, I just don't know which ones they are actually in the beds. <laughs> oh well. Many of these pepper plants that I put in here are red and green chilies. Um, because they did very well last year in the heat without a shade cloth. And the red and green chili seeds that I planted are native New Mexico seeds. They're grown in Hatch, New Mexico, which I live very close to. They're just 
very well suited for my area. So I'm more inclined to put red and green chilies out here unprotected beyond the shade cloth in the in-ground garden just because they already do well in this area, theoretically. <laughs> but besides these couple of pepper plants in the middle right here, my in-ground rows are largely squash plants right here and then largely potatoes back here besides the infection of pumpkins I have over there. Now this shade cloth structure does span the length of my garden north to south. It was originally until here, I, I believe it was this pole, but then this year I did extend it all the way out so that I would be able to grow potatoes for longer. A shade cloth is not 100% required here in the southwest or in the desert but it is highly, highly recommended because not only does it help cut down on the heat, but I live in the high desert. I live at elevation above 4,000 feet and the UV rays can just be incredibly intense on the garden. And I'm talking about just burning plants from one day in the sun, just completely decimating the top layer of soil. So having a 30% or 40% shade cloth over your garden can just do worlds of difference for your plants. And I do use 40% shade cloth across the entire top of this. Now this is west, as you can see, this is the sunset. So I am not going to be extending this shade cloth structure along here to the east. It's kind of expensive to build and the shade cloth is expensive to make. But what it does having this over on the west side is that as the sun sets, this shade cloth will cast a shadow to the east. So as I continue to build more beds to the east here, yes, they will be in full unprotected sun for most of the day, and I'll have to plant my plants there accordingly. But in the hottest part of the afternoons, as the sun is setting, they will receive that shade, which is the whole point. <laughs> so it is getting quite dark here, guys. It's very, very dusky. My camera does a good job of showing the lightness as much as it can. But I'm going to get inside now. I was hoping to be able to show you the entire homestead today, but it's the first garden tour of the season and I need to get my sunlight timing right. I'm glad we got the whole complete garden in though. <laughs> and I'm so excited. It's spring and I have all my plants planted. And soon I'm going to have boatloads of food coming in. Thank you guys for joining me on this garden tour. I'm so stoked. I hope you can tell. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing more, please check out my videos. I have over 100 videos down below. I will be doing garden tours and other gardening things and homesteading things and chicken things for the very long foreseeable future. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe share if you know someone who would like this as well and i will catch you guys in the next one